All right, part three. Glad you guys made it this far. In the last episode, we left off with our model being fully redone, but we realized that we didn't have any textures on. In this episode, we are actually going to work on the texturing. So first things first, let's make sure that this is saved. And then let's go to File, External Data, and we're going to click on Pack All into Blend, and redo that, this time hitting Unpack All into Files, and also hit Create when necessary. Once we've done that, we can go in and close the program, and move into the Textures folder, and inside of there we should find our textures. Bring those into our image editor, we can see that they are rather high in resolution, so we're going to have to bring them down quite a bit. So I'm going to start with this accessory. We're going to go down to the bottom and unlock the image. Then we're going to go up, image, canvas size, adjust the number of pixels. The highest reliably taken is 32 by 32. You can also do 32 by 64. There is a chart in the bottom of the model dev pins, of which will give you the information for what is allowed and what is not allowed. Once you've decreased the canvas size, you go and hit Control T and adjust as you will need. Once you have it in the spot that you want it to be, Go up to Image, Mode, Indexed Color. This will reduce the file size massively. Go ahead and hit OK. And then let's go to File, Save As, name your texture, and go to this drop down and find the file type that you would like. I use Targa. You can also use PNG if you'd like. We're going to rinse and repeat this for everything else, and I'll see you guys after we get to the next part. While we're looking at this face, this is actually going to be used for the skin and not actually the face. Alright, and here's our first big texture. We're going to want to break this down into several parts, so it might be better for you to go in and create a new document. And here you can change the resolution. For this one, I'm going to do 64 by 32. And in the toolbar, you'll find a little select tool. I'm going to select this little leg texture right here. Hit Control C. Move over to our document. Hit Control V to let us resize it. Get to the size I want it. Hit Enter. And then from here, it's a rinse and repeat. And you're going to do this for every other texture you want on here. If you're not sure where your texture is on here, you can go over to your Blender file, drag this up in this little corner down here, go ahead and click it, move up to UV Image Editor, click it again. Let's go ahead and select the texture's image. And you want to hit this little pin so that it doesn't go away. Now as we select different portions of our model, we will see where those vertices line up on our texture image. You may find yourself needing to go through and combine several textures into one just to make things look right. And that is perfectly legal, and no one's going to dock you points for that. Fast forward through this as most of this is being rinsed and repeated.
Alright, now we're on to texturing for the eyes and mouth. Most models will come with a bank that looks something like this, where it has multiple eyes, mouths, eyelids, you name it. So we're going to take this. We're also going to need to open up the files of our template to find Link's eyes and mouth banks in here. Let's go and bring these in. And for the mouth bank, we're actually going to unlock it and increase the size from 32 by 128 to 32 by 192. Once you've done that, we can go ahead and move the textures up and we'll come back to that later. Let's also bring in just the default images of eyes and mouth for Link. And we're going to use this for creating our eye and mouth textures. Starting with eyes, we're going to copy the skin in, adjust it to the size that we want it. On this model, it actually turned out that I had to do a little bit more cutting and editing than I usually would have otherwise. But with a little bit of effort, we can get there. Alright, for our default eyes, we're going to go ahead and save it as eyes, and I actually use PNG for these ones just to be safe. After that, we can go and delete Link's eyes, and then select everything else. Right click, select flatten image, copy that, and paste it over Link's eye bank. Then we shall rinse and repeat for the rest of Link's eyes. A small side note, on these eyes right here, the left and the right looking, they are actually flipped for whatever reason in game, so make sure you put them in the right spot as to what you would need them for. I'll go ahead and fast forward until we get to the mouths. Once we finish filling out the bank, we will save as, and then we will remove ZZPALO from the name, and I save this as a PNG once again just to be safe. Now we're at the mouth banks, so we're going to take our skin texture again, go to our mouth texture, and adjust to where we have the right space. Then we will select our mouth, copy it in, and this one's actually a lot more simple than our face textures, so I'll go ahead and start fast forwarding now, and I'll see you at the end of this one. Alright, you see here for the last two sections, I actually end up placing blanks. This is because these two sections aren't actually used, they're just there. And then you will remove ZZPALO from the name. Alright, now we have all of our textures done. 
we can go ahead and move on to placing them on our model. So let's go ahead and go to edit mode. Select the sections that we want to edit by right clicking and pressing Ctrl plus or B for box select or C for circle select. On the side we can see the textures that we have. We're probably going to be better off creating new textures as some models will have some weird material effects going on and it's just easier to start with a brand new one. When we have our material selected, we can go up to the top and move over to the texture section. Scroll down in there until you find image. Go ahead and hit the little file button. Navigate to your textures folder and pull out the texture. Now if we go down here, we can open up the texture inside of our UV image editor. And we'll adjust where our texture is based on how it looks. In the main screen, if you hit U, you'll get this drop down. And in projecting U, we'll create a UV map of that texture on the bottom. We'll go and adjust to where we want it. Once we're satisfied, we can move on to the next texture. And this will be a rest and repeat for everything else. Since my hair is actually from the original model, it's easy for me to just select it and adjust the UVs as I need it. Next, I'm going to put in the eyes. For the eyes and mouth, you are not going to use the banks in the actual model, only the, only the default eyes and mouth textures. For the rest of this, I'll just use the skin texture. And it would actually turn out that I forgot to get the hands, so I'm going to bring those in. And from here, just go ahead and continue on. There were a few other textures that I kind of forgot to make, but those are easy to make and just throw them inside. For the most part, this is going to be a very tedious process. And it is very simple too.
All right, at this point we have a model that looks fairly similar to the original. We have a few more things to do before we finish off this part of the tutorial. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go over to the toolbar on this side and click on shading. Inside of this menu, we're going to want to recalculate to make sure all of our normals are set correctly. Set from faces, just to be safe. And lastly, hit smooth shading from one of these options. Once we've done that, let's go ahead and head back to object mode. We're gonna delete our old model. Then we'll come down to object, parent, and then clear parent. This will make sure that if there is a skeleton, that the model will be removed from it. Now that we've unparented the skeleton, we can go ahead and resize and adjust. Let's come over to our materials and make sure we delete anything that we don't need. And make sure that the only thing in our scene is our model. Once that's done, we can go ahead and save, and we'll pick up from here in the next tutorial where we'll talk about rigging the model and then finally exporting it out to be used as play as.